always learning and growing, attracting the right people, and keeping your vision in focus, in focus every day. This is the Brian Covey Show. What's up, guys, and welcome back to another edition of the Brian Covey Show. So today, our guest, Brian Perhant, really needs no introduction. Um, you've probably seen him on Million Dollar Listening, New York. You've probably read some of his books, Selling Like Sturhant. And then my favorite, Ryan, I know we're going to talk about today, Big Money Energy. Yes. We bought that for our team. And I'm sure we'll talk about that. But man, nice. outside of that, opening your own brokerage, you got your own personal branding, you're doing these courses, you're running around everywhere, you're selling like billion of real estate, not millions, but billions, Yeah. and still have time for family. Yeah, sort of. You have to ask my wife about that one. Yeah. But I do the best I can. Uh, we know it well. So we've got three young ones and and that is always the, the constant juggle. And I'm sure people probably ask you and they wonder, okay, Ryan, you're doing all these things, man. How in the world do you ever keep up and how do you prioritize and keep your focus on keeping the main things, the main things? Yeah, it depends on the day. You know, I think um, where there's windows of opportunity, I really focus on the the family as best I can, but I'm you know, I really like working. I just, I really like working. I really like building. Um, this is not an afterthought for me. You know, my, my number one priority is the business and growing it and, um, you know, and, and staying successful. And so, you know, I, I do the best I can with everything else. Yeah. That's kind of, I think it's how we all go through, right? Like everybody's like, oh, I got it all figured out. No, no, man. Um, yeah. You know, it's there. And I love your story of origin a bit. I've listened to you share it several times of starting as an actor, and then yeah. moving to New York and then finding your way into real estate, which everybody always asks, like, how'd you get into mortgage or real estate and these things? And it's like, did you ever think you'd be doing the things you're doing now when you were there, like in that moment of, yeah, no. being an actor? And yeah, no, no. I, I, I like, I think a thing for me is that I've always, um, I, I've always just said yes to opportunities, right? You stay, right. you say yes. Uh, you learn as much as you can and you remain incredibly positive throughout. And then you'll pass a corner and that corner will lead you to another opportunity. And then you hit another corner and that corner will lead you to another opportunity. And if you just kind of like follow the corners, you'll, you'll eventually get to where you were meant to get to. Um, and so, you know, I came to New York city to do theater, did not work out, got into a soap opera that didn't work out, went into hand modeling to pay the bills that then couldn't do that forever. Got my real estate license, so I didn't have to bartend or wait tables or do temp work right. um, because I wasn't smart enough to go to law school. I tried. I took the LSAT. Totally bombed it. I think also I just didn't care. Like I didn't. I didn't want to do it. You know, like I wasn't super excited about becoming a lawyer. Um, and so then the real estate thing just gave me total freedom. And I think I've always kind of liked that, like not having a job, like not, not having a boss, not having a quote unquote job. Yeah. Like you know, I have work, and then I have the career that the work helps me create. Like yes. I never wake up and go to my job. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I think that's really, really important for me. Well, I can see that as you live it out, what I love is in a way you are creating this whole new brand. And I love what you've done is because you, you've broken, I don't call it ceilings, like you've broken barriers that people thought existed and you, you can't do this, you can't do that in real estate. And you've yeah. built your personal brand in such a way that I think people are trying to emulate. Obviously you're teaching people now, which is super cool. But I'd love for you to unpack some of that is today, you know, I think most people recognize they need a brand. Like no matter what they're doing, they're like, okay, yeah. I need a brand. I don't know sure. where to start. I don't even know what to do. Yeah, no, we, uh, we're, we're filming right now a, a new course. You know, a big thing that we do is my way of like giving back, if you will, is been taking what I know about selling real estate, building a sales career, being an entrepreneur, working for myself, and literally telling anyone else that wants to listen to me, like this is how you do what you need to do. If you want to be in sales, this is how you sell anything and this is how you build a sales career. You want to build a personal brand, this is how you do it. So we're building a course right now that just walks people through over the course of like 50 chapters how to logistically and legitimately build out a personal brand. Because if you think about what brand is, um, uh, brand is not a logo because I meet people all the time. They're like, I'm working on my brand. I'm like, okay, what are you doing? They're like, oh, let me show you. I'm like, oh, show me. Okay, show me your brand. It's like, it's like someone saying like, Hey, let me show you my reputation. Like, all right, yeah. show it to me. What are you, you show me testimonials? And they always show me like a cool photo of themselves with like a logo and a slogan. Like, look how cool this brand is like that. That's a visual identity, um, uh, for yourself. But that's not a personal brand. Personal brand is following the math of what 
are you at your core? What is that core identity? Who are you? And figuring out what your and is. So like even the most boring salespeople in the world who have no families, no hobbies, no other interests other than selling, who work 20 hours a day, they have an and. They have another interest that is something other than what they do all day. Yeah. You find out what that is, and then that's your core idea, identity. So for me, it's real estate, and I've just always loved cameras. I've always loved the stage. I've always loved you know performance, and I've always loved media, which is what it's turned into. So my thing is real estate plus media. I want to be known as the the number one digital media real estate agent in the world. Um, and so that's my core identity. That's my brand. So I'm going to start putting that out there into the atmosphere. Put it out there. Let the, that let that be the energy. That then becomes my uh, uh, perception, right? That the world has of me. So people, if I do it all the time, people then see me and they're like, oh, well, that's the real estate media guy, right? That's his thing. And that's how they know me. Then I leave the room and then they start talking about me behind my back, which then becomes my reputation. And then over time, that reputation becomes your personal brand. It has nothing to do with your logo. Um, and so, uh, so the course is about how to create that. And it's that core identity, consistent content, and then shouting it all from the mountaintop. Um, and if you can do those three things, anybody can build a strong personal brand where other people will say, ah, you're the one who does loans, right? You're the one who does loans in that neighborhood at those purchase prices. Yeah. I, 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 I we've never met before, but I feel like I, I see you all the time and you're, you're the one who does that, right? Yep. Okay. Boom. Brand is taking hold. I love that. Cause too often, you know, it's like we've explained kind of the why and people either they're fearful of putting themselves out there. They're, they're afraid of what other people might say. And it's like, and in our business, like you can't be a scarcity. Like people have to see you and know who you are. And yep. I love how you put yourself out there earlier than some people. Did you recognize that was going to be a trend? And you're like, okay, cool. I've got some experience on camera. Like I'm going to go with this. And you just kind of leaned into it early. Yeah, kind of. I mean, I, I listen, I, I trained as an actor when I was growing up. It was the one thing I was good at. I wasn't that great at school. I was, you know, I was okay. I wasn't great at any sports. Um, uh, but I was, I was, I liked doing theater. I liked performing. I think I like pretending to be other people than myself. Cause you know, when you're, when you're a teenager and you are overweight with really bad skin, you know, like you, you really don't want to be yourself most of the day. And so theater was like a good outlet for me to pretend to be other people because I could be an old man one day. I could dress up as a woman. I could be whatever I want. Yeah. Um, and I think that's why I really like doing Shakespeare. And I, I studied at the Globe in London. Um, and, and then it's really hard to do theater as a business, right? It's really, really tough. Um, it's tough to make a living. And it, it, you know, New York City especially will eat you up and chew you out. Oh, yeah. And so... You know, but I had experience in front of a camera. I did a soap opera, like I said, for a short period of time. I experienced auditioning. I didn't experience, you know, knowing kind of like what hit, what didn't hit. I've been on stage a thousand times, you know, and lots of comedy. So I kind of knew, you know, comedic timing and all that. And so, you know, when the when I started doing real estate, I totally put theater to the side. I put acting off to the side and said, all right, well, this real estate thing makes me happier now. Like I, even though the real estate business is really hard and it's all over the place, like it is way, way better for my mental health to be a real estate agent than it is to try to be an actor in New York city right. where all you do is spend money and you get rejected to your face because of your face and the color of your hair. Right. And you're too, you're too tall and, oh, I just cast my friend. And so, you know, it's a, it's a grind, right? Like Morgan Freeman didn't do anything that any of us know of until he was 50. And so I had to make the decision at the time of like, is this it's really what I want to do? do? Right? Is this really how I want to live my life? Yeah. Um, uh, and it wasn't and I got into real estate and I became addicted to the deals and I became I was totally fine with the rejection. I mean, it sucked. Don't get me wrong. I'm not like emotionless. But if someone didn't take an apartment, I wasn't like, ugh, because I, I was so used to being rejected because of my my mouth, you know, and my lips and my nose. And I, theater is so personal. Um, and real estate isn't. And so if you just show up, you memorize information, and then you treat every relationship like an improv, you just say yes and over and over and over, you can do anything in this business. You sprinkle in a little discipline, a little structure, and a significant amount of follow up, follow through and follow back. And like you could be the biggest salesperson in any market you're in. Like it's not that complicated. It's just doing all that and then not ever taking a break. Yeah. And I sense that with you, like 
And I love this too, because I can relate when you're talking about that. I was, I was overweight, 12, 13 years old. And I remember my doctor telling me like, Hey man, your, your cholesterol at this age, like you got to do something different. Uh, didn't have the best face with uh, acne issues, but now I look at where you are and, and you are disciplined. It's one area I've focused on is, is I see you working out your health and all those things. You got to have your energy to keep up at the pace you're running. Yeah. You, you seem pretty disciplined there. Was that something later in life you picked up and you said, okay, I've, I've got to do this to, to have the energy or where'd that change? Yeah, it was kind of, um, you know, when I moved to New York, my first apartment was with two paralegals who were on track to go to law school and become big attorneys. And then I had one of the bedrooms uh, and I was like the theater guy, right? So I basically meant moving to New York with no job. Yeah. You know, I moved to New York, no job, no income, no nothing. And I'm going to figure things out. And my parents were like, this is ridiculous. But if you want to try it, try it. But here's the deal. You got to wake up before they do. You got to go to bed after they do. And there's going to be a lot in this world that you cannot control. You can't control for the most part, right? You can't control really what you look like. I mean, you can, but like not, not, not when you're 22 with no money in New York City. Right. You, know, you can't control who your parents are. There's so many things that you couldn't control. And I realized that even though I couldn't change my circumstances, I could change my energy. And then I could start carrying myself like somebody who was successful, who did have a winning part. And there's a big difference to how you carry yourself in your shoulders, your face, your handshake, your eye contact on the second date versus the first date. Yeah. And so like, you know, as a classic example, I tried to do actor, I, I tried to be an actor and tried to do movies and TV and all that stuff for two years in New York City. And then I moved over to real estate because I ran out of money and I needed to do something. And I just became addicted to the game of real estate. And the more time and energy I put in, the more money I could take out and I could finally afford rent. Um, uh, once Million Dollar Listing happened and I went to that audition, I didn't care at all. It was like the last thing I wanted to do was a reality TV show, but it was there and they were calling for all agents under the age of 30. and. It's like, all right, I've been on camera before, so I'll go. But I didn't care whether I got it or not. I walked into that casting room as if it was like my 10th date. You know, like they asked me questions and I gave them answers and I left. I was like, all right, whatever. Um, that show's going to suck. And then they called me back. I was like, oh, interesting. Two years after that, Million Dollar Listing comes on the air and I got a call from uh, Ben Stiller and Noah Baumbach's team because they're casting a movie called While We're Young. And they said, we want, you to audition. we want you to audition to be in our new movie. I was like, are you kidding me? I come to New York to do movies, Broadway, all that. I can't make it happen. I get into real estate. I'm now doing a real estate reality show yeah. on Bravo. And now you guys reach out to me? All right, fine. So like, I showed up at the audition, long story short. And, like, I, I, and there, were, there was like 100 other guys in suits for the role. Right. And so I was like, dude, you guys called me and now I'm showing up here and there's all these other actors in here pretending to, you know, be the role that you asked me to be. And they were also super late and really delayed. And I had like a showing that I had to get to. And yeah. so I was stressed out and I was annoyed. So by the, fine, the time they finally called me, I just like sat down there and I just went through it. And I was like, guys, I'm fucking late. I gotta go. And they cast me. And like, like it's, that's, you know, it's huge life lesson. The person in the relationship who has all the power is the one who cares the least. Yeah. That's like that. That was a big lesson for me to learn um, uh, because I always thought that like if you're really nice and you want it enough, like people are good to people. But if sometimes you want it too much, it's the last thing anyone's ever going to be attracted to. Yeah. And so it goes the same way for deals. You know, it's like the classic takeaway now. Like, no problem. Don't buy it. You know, no problem. Yeah, I, I, no, I, I think this one's tough to afford as well for someone like you, Yeah, you know? Yeah, exactly. And he's just kind of like, take it away from people. And then all of a sudden people are like, what, what, no, what, no, I, what? Here's my offer. <laughs> oh, love it. Yeah. Cause you can sense that desperation. You know, I remember when a mentor sharing that it's like, when you get on the phone and you're meeting with somebody like you can't be desperate. I mean, you could be to your point, you could be broke. You, you could know this deal is going to change your life or make that next rent payment. <laughs> And you can't have that. And and I love this because we've, we've been loving your book, by the way. Oh, thank you. Here. So walk me through a little bit of that. Like where, where the genesis of that started, because I love how you've encapsulated a lot in a book that will say it's useful for anybody. I've been sharing with my kids, right? Like it's, it's got some flow to it. Yeah. Thank you. It's, um, you know, I wrote it uh, during quarantine because um, I knew I, brought, I wanted to write a second book and I just didn't know when I was going to have the time. 
And then God showed up and was like, hey, here, here's a little bit of time. So yeah, I took quarantine exactly. to write my second book and to build the new business. So I built the the brokerage that we that we launched in September of 2020. Um, but you know, my first book was Sell Like Sirhan, which is really like my toolkit for everything you need to do to sell real estate or anything and how to build a sales career. All the things that I use to think about day in and day out. Um, uh, uh, and it was really that, like a toolkit. And it's it's been incredibly helpful for a lot of salespeople around the world, even not salespeople, yeah. who just read it. And it you know it's very, very helpful for them. Big Money Energy is the secret sauce. So if it felt like Sir Hand are the ingredients for how to make the meal, Big Money Energy is the confidence to actually make that meal and serve it like you've been doing it your whole life. How do you have confidence in the room when you haven't gotten the experience to have the confidence yet? You know, because it's easy if, you, if you've been in the business for 20 years and you know exactly what to do in every situation, you walk in, you walk out, then fine, like you're leading off experience. But if you don't have that experience or if you want to get to the next level or if you just want to feel better about your career, then what is that thing that you bring to every meeting, every showing, every phone call, every dinner, right? Every networking event yeah. that that attracts business to you. And that for me is something that I always called big money energy, um, which really means big magnetic energy, yeah. right? It's the ability to attract business. Because for me, like as a young real estate agent, no business comes my way. Everything is cold call, door knock, Craigslist ads, New York Times ads, postcards, direct mail. Like you're pushing it out over and over. And if you get a client, it's great and they move, but they're not gonna refer you business for a long time most likely, right? And the chances of you building a big referral career in a year are like next to zero. And so it takes a long time. Um, and you've got to be able to figure out how to survive. So I wanted to be able to walk into every room as if I've been doing it for 10 years. And it comes down to a lot of different things. And that's that's kind of what I, I put into the book. But it's uh, been super helpful for the people that have gone through it so far. It's been a lot of fun. See, and I love it because I've shared it with different people. And I was curious with you, is like, do you think anybody can learn that confidence and and kind of get their swagger in a way of yes they can they can they can level up right everybody yeah, of course yeah listen it's there's a big difference between uh, can I swear on this yeah yeah Good. there's a big difference between big money energy which is a humble understated confidence that allows you to attract business and be magnetic to others and bullshit money energy yeah right. Bullshit money energy is fake it till you make it. Bullshit money energy is uh, lying, right? Bullshit money energy is smoke and mirrors. Yeah. Um, big money energy, big magnetic energy is about predicting your own future. So writing down with a pen, what do you want your career to look like in two years from now, right? 24 months from now, what are you wearing? How much money do you have in the bank? Are you married? Do you have a car? What's it look like? Do you have a new house? Like go through your entire life realistically, but then push it 10%. Yeah. And figure out who is that person? Because that person that you want to be in two years, that guy, that woman, that's who you work for. Like that's your boss because you're going to be that person in the blink of an eye. Like it's almost 2022. It feels like it was just New Year's 2020 yesterday. Yeah. But it's almost 2022. So two years goes by so fast. Um, and you can then start carrying yourself like that person. If that person's done 100 more deals, you wake up every single day and you tell yourself, I've done 100 more deals. Yeah. And walk like you have. Talk like you have. Don't tell people that you've done things you didn't do, but carry yourself with that level of confidence as if somebody has already put that check in your pocket. Yeah. Right? Well, I've heard you talk about that before. To me, that strikes as this difference between mindset and identity. Like when I hear you talk about that, I think about like there, there's much more substance to that. Like I start to believe I'm going to become this person. So I start doing the things that are required today. So in two years, I become the person. Yeah. Like it's, you know, it's something that I'll tell people when they're talking to me about how to, you know, how to, how to get, um, uh, you know, how to get promoted, let's say, right? Or, you know, I am, I've been in long, the same job for a long time, or I've been on the sales team for a long, a long time. What do I do? What do I need to do? It's like, it, it, be the role before you are the role, right? Assume the position before you are the position. Don't ask for more money. 
Okay. Don't sit in someone else's chair, but start doing the work of the role you want to be before it's even given to you. And you will then create that role for yourself, or you will be the obvious choice when it comes time to pick somebody because you're already kind of doing it. Yeah. You know, I have people that work for me that are great examples of that. Like I never thought that this person was going to be my director of new development, but they, she just started acting as if she was the director of new development. She started really helping, managing everything, controlling towers, discussing with developers. She was really, really good at it. And when the time came for me to like pick someone and say, hey, I need you to have a title because you keep coming to all these meetings with me, I didn't have to go find somebody because she assumed the role before she was the role. Um, and that's big money energy, right? And it's she wouldn't have done that had she sucked at it. Like if she was terrible at it, I would have said, please stop. Don't do that. Go back to what you were doing. But if you're good at it, keep doing it. But just don't let any of your other work drop by the wayside either. Yeah. Um, and just remember, entitlement is probably the worst word in the history of the English language. Like, there is no such thing as entitlement. You are not entitled to anything. Do the work. Put it in. You know what drives me fucking crazy, man? We had an intern this summer. Begged, begged, begged. Begged to come here. Okay, Begged, begged, begged. And then he had a friend call in and all that. He's a young kid. Um, young guy. Um, uh, he begged to be here all summer. I'm going to do, I'll, I'll be the coffee guy. I just want to be in the room. I want to work hard. I want to work for free. I just, I just need, I want to learn. You're my hero. You're my idol. You're this, this, this. So yeah. finally we're like, all right, we don't have any room for any more interns, but fine. Sure. Um, uh, you know, make the most of the summer if you can. A week into it, he starts asking for things, hmm. right? People in the office start asking him to do some stuff. And he's like, uh, do I really have to do that? Cause I really want to go and do this. And it created such a negative environment around him. We ended up asking him to leave a couple of weeks into it because he felt so entitled for some fucking reason about being in that room uh, with us because he had like persisted so much to get there, which I appreciate, but then wasn't humble about the opportunity and felt like he deserved stuff. And then it was a real quick, please leave from us. That's right. Um, and so you know, I think that's that's also an important lesson, especially for younger people to learn. I think it's become much, much harder for people to understand as they grow up in today's world uh, that you do have to work for what you want, you know? Well, I think that that's a lesson that everybody listening is like, to your point, like, be great wherever you are, whatever role you've been given, to your point, like, be grateful for that. And if you perform well, you'll, you'll have opportunities. Yeah. And I look at the culture you've built as you're talking about this. I'd, I'd love for you to just kind of unpack how have you built the culture or tips you would give people? Because as you, as you launch Sir Hant and now it's, it's your baby, right? It's your company. What are some of the beliefs or things that you're instilling to drive the culture you want? Um, well, oh, there's a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> One, it's kind of understanding the, the what, like, what is our cultural identity, right? We're salespeople, but like we are fun. We're forward thinking. Um, we're incredibly passionate, incredibly driven. And, you know, we say all the time, like we are here to create, collaborate and inspire. Mm. Like we want to create stories, create deals, create markets, create content. Yeah. Right? We want to collaborate with everybody and anybody, no matter who you are, let's do things together. That's the whole point of being a human being on planet earth. Right. And then we want to inspire others, inspire other salespeople, inspire other clients, inspire developers of other towers to say, wow, the way they sold that tower was amazing. I'm going to actually call them. Um, and you do those three things every day and it really, really works. Um, you know, I, I think I also, uh, I think I'm fair with everybody. Um, I'm definitely not easy, right? Um, I think if you do your job and you lead the way and you do what you can with the freedom that I give people just to be successful and go and make something of your life and prove to us that you're amazing, and then I will totally stay out of your hair and just crush it all day long. You'll become an invaluable resource to me. Yeah. Um, if I got to follow up with you, then now I'm doing your job. Uh, and that doesn't work for me. And I think I also, I do not pay people um, uh, what they're worth. I pay people what they deserve. And if you deserve a significant pay increase, I'll give people raises like on a Tuesday. I'll wait till the end of the year. If you're crushing it, dude, you deserve it. Let's go. Like, let's yeah. uh, let's let's just keep going. Um, and if you don't deserve what I'm paying you, I will totally cut you back or remove you because there are eight billion people on this planet, and there's a million people that want your seat. Um, which, 
you know, at the same time cultivates a sense of, uh, uh, of, you know, belonging for the people that are here. Because yeah. if you're the best, you want to be surrounded by the best, you know, and it starts to make you feel like, man, I don't know, Ryan will hire anybody, you know, and I can't ever have that. That'll be like a, that'll be a poison. Yeah. And that's, you see that toxic, so it's like very toxic to cultures where you just let anybody in. And I love how you, you articulate that though. Is like, that is something today that as an owner, we should all be thinking about is like, how do we reward the best people on the team so that they stay? Yeah. And I would love for you to kind of look at this because we're both, you know, in real estate, mortgage, all this stuff happening here. And, and things seem to be changing quickly, right? Depending on what market sure. you're in and all this stuff. And I've heard you talk about this lately. Where do you see this going into 2022? where, you know, we've had this housing shortage a little bit here. You've got, seems like New York, obviously, there's some great properties. I see you <laughs> listing. Yeah. Um, where, do you, where do you see things trending? For the first time in my career, so I got into the business the day Lehman Brothers filed for bankruptcy, right? Oh, like, yeah. My I day started and I, the world went into the Great Recession that day. Um, and so real estate was always really hard for me. It, uh, it kind of started to rebound and people started buying things again in 2011 and 12. And then we had a good, you know, second term Obama run. Um, and then Trump became president and people left New York City. Taxes changed. New York became really expensive. The U.S. dollar became really, really, really strong. So then foreigners stopped putting their money into U.S. dollars in the form of real estate. And so the market here got really, really tough. Um, uh, but every deal I'd ever done between 2008 and COVID, I would say, I would say 98% of the deals I've ever done were need sales or need purchasers. So it's life changes. Having a baby, I need to move. Yeah. I got rec I got transferred, I've been recruited, I need to move, right? I I, I need just more space, any more clock, whatever it might be. People were they needed to sell or they needed to buy. For the first time in my entire career, post COVID now, I'm dealing with people who need to buy and need to sell and people who want to buy and want to sell, which is super new for me. I'm like, you know, I, I dealing with people who like they want to spend money now. I'm like I don't, I don't know what to do with you. It's like I like I almost I almost don't believe it. You know, like like I just sold an apartment on Friday for thirty three million dollars. I showed it one time, wow. and you know they just wanted it and they wanted to renovate it and they thought it was fun and cool and it's going to be a great area. And I was like, don't you want to don't you want to hit me first? Don't you want to physically <laughs> abuse me and yell at me for three months? Don't you want to like ghost me for six months and make me like follow you and hunt you down the way I've done for the last 13 years? Yeah. You sure you just want to pay the asking and buy it? What the fuck is going on? Yeah. And so like, I'm so trepidatious to the current marketplace right now. I'm so like, this is not going to last forever. And I'm soaking it up as much as I possibly can right now. Um, uh, but it's awesome. And I am just, so you asked about the future. Um, you know, You've seen this. I've seen this. The the major metro markets that we play in, and for me, it's every market I'm in, yeah. um, are global markets. Whether it's New York City, luxury vacation markets like Aspen or the Hamptons um, or South Florida or anywhere, these are global markets. Yeah. And there's been no global economy in these markets since February of 2020 until this November 8th. So borders are open as of November 8th. It's not going to be like a windfall, right? but I'm telling you, starting, it's going to be slowly, families are going to come first, see loved ones, the whole thing, November, December. It's all going to be fine. Come January, I think 2022 is going to be the biggest year for loans and for real estate the world has ever seen. I think it's going to make these last 18 months look puny um, because we're going to get those moments again of people coming in where the money doesn't mean anything. It's right. the, it's property ownership. Like, did you ever watch oh, a long time ago? There was a show called uh, 30 rock with Tina yeah. Fey. Oh yeah. Alec Baldwin. Yep. Dude, there's a moment in that show that was like funny at the time, but now is just wild to think about because the show was made in like 2003, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. And so like in 2006, there was an episode where Tina Fey and her boyfriend or somebody were in an apartment in New York city and they were looking at it and they're like, Oh, should we make an offer? This would be great. And the broker is behind them and saying, well, you're gonna have to move really quickly. The market's moving fast. And Tina Fey is like, okay, well, everybody says that you're just trying to sell us. And then yeah. the door blows open and like a Saudi sheik walks in and he's like, 
I take this one for my motorcycles and then leaves. And the broker's like, sorry, this is gone now. And you're like, what? Like I've never had that in my entire career. And I cannot wait until all of these cheap Americans who will negotiate the price of a banana will have to automatically wish that they could go back in time because they didn't make the choices to, to buy and pull the trigger when they could because foreign money is going to flow in and people are going to want to own U.S. dollars yeah. as a hedge against their own inflation and their own currency and own property. And they're going to buy up all our cars. Um, it's going to be like totally insane. So anyone who's in sales, buckle up, you know, have a good Thanksgiving, get some rest in New Year's, and then you will not sleep for the next, I would say, 12 to 24 months. And I love that outlook because there's so many people talking about, you know, the, this recession coming and all these things happening. And, and yet there's these, this whole other current that you described. And I can see of people, like you said, they want to buy a second home. They want to have an investment property. And they realize, I actually want to build some wealth in my lifetime. Yeah. Real and that's, listen, that's an important word, right? Like they, the, I don't think there's ever been a greater time. I mean, relatively maybe like the original California gold rush, but like yeah. there, um, I don't think there's ever been as great of a time for wealth creation as there's been in the last 18 months. Yeah. Like people have made so much money um, and they don't know what to do with it, especially outside the United States. Yeah. Uh, and so like, I'm just looking forward to the day when someone could come in from overseas or call me and say, hey, I'm currently in, I don't know, currently in Berlin. Um, uh, and I'd like to buy that apartment. Um, I'll, you know, uh, send me the address to your seller's wallet and, you know, I'll transfer, you know, whatever it's going to be in terms of crypto yeah. and not have to go through any hoops, you know, <laughs> for anything yeah. like the process of every international buyer we have for my entire career has been, okay, but where's the money? Right. Because if yeah. it's in China, it's not coming over here and I don't want to waste our time. That's right. In Russia, no way. Right, I don't want to waste our time. Where's the money? Where are the entities? Walk us through this. If there's a much easier way to transfer funds, and you can decentralize the way people pay for goods and services, like that's pretty. That's pretty nuts. And now that Bitcoin is what on the stock exchange as an ETF, what's yep. the trading it? It's going to be at like it's going to hit new records today. It's at sixty three thousand right now. It's pretty Saw nuts. that. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, should have bought it thirteen years ago. Oh, you and me both. I saw somebody post and they were going through the years and I'm like, yeah, oh, I, oh almost did. Almost. Yeah. Insane. I Dude, insane. Like, oh, I was, I've, I've talked to a handful of people who just like errantly put a hundred grand on Bitcoin, like in 2013 and, uh, forgot about it. Um, it's just freaking nuts. Craziness. Yeah. And now they're like, Hey, I need to buy like a lot of apartments, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's like, like, I do something with all this money that's there. And it's going to be interesting to watch how all that does come together. And I think for those of us that are on the, kind of the front end, the cutting edge of it is there is opportunity. You know, it may not look like it used to years ago, but yeah. it's it's going to be there. Yeah. Crazy. I know we, we could talk all day. I want to be respectful of your time and, and make sure people know we talked about Obviously, we'll put links and how to get the books because I think, you know, I'm a fan. We've actually deployed them out to our team, but also Thank your you. new course that's coming out, yeah. right? Uh, well, we've had a, we, we, we run like the largest sales online course uh, anywhere, I think. Um, and it's called Sell Like Serhant. You can Google it or go to ryanserhant.com click the course button or go to sellexerhand.com, whatever you want to do. Um, we have about almost 10,000 salespeople in 109 countries. Uh, and we built this incredible salesperson community. And there's a significant amount of, of curriculum content. So you can take kind of the original course that we made that really put everything on the map. It's how to sell anything, anyone. Um, you can take, the, if you want to learn how to sell through social media, right, get more clients. We have a social ads course with one of the best like digital marketing gurus ever that works for me. Um, we will we we have a low inventory course like how to build a career in a low inventory market for all of us. Uh, we're putting out the branding course how to build a personal brand, um, and thank, that's going to come out in Thanksgiving. And then there's workbook work guides. There's virtual workshops. There's uh, there's like just so much. And then there's an amazing community of people for referral business. Um, and so, you know, if anyone out there listening is in, in sales, you should check it out. I love it. Love it. Love what you're doing. Thanks for making time and, and making the world a better place. Cause 
you know, what's cool is the success you've had. Now you're sharing these tips. And, and I think this is for anybody is you can follow along and the guys like Ryan that have already paved the way, learn lessons that they've already gone through and lived. Yeah. Go, go implement them in your business today, wherever Copy you are. Them. Right. It's the best thing, right? Imitation is the greatest form of flattery. When we put out our website and it was covered in all this video, we got rid of all the standard headshots for agents. They're all GIFs. Like we had fun with it and we were like, this is going to be weird. And then all of a sudden, all these websites like look like mine. Like, great. Awesome. Changing the world. Yes. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty classic. Uh, it, it is changing and I appreciate what you're doing and Thanks, making man. time for our audience and listeners. I know it's going to be great. We'll include the links in there. I mean, Congrats on all the success you've had. And I know the two-year version of Ryan down the road, 2023 down, is going to be crushing even more. Can't wait to see what you're doing. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Cool. Thanks, Ryan. Subscribe, rate, and review The Brian Covey Show today. Go to briancovey.com.